Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Alchemy. Welcome to the channel. I want to talk to you all about filtering and the, I guess, a lot, a lot of people have been requesting kilohertz come out with a filter table. And while on paper, I think that sounds really cool. I think that it brings up a lot of potential issues about like, well, for one, dealing with phase, but two, understanding what a morphing filter actually does, and three, actually giving you some kind of halfway solution about how to kind of create something that might be in the, in the middle, in between. So if that seems interesting, then stick around, but we need to talk about morphing filter in the first place. So a morphing filter, at least if you describe it by Ableton means, is uh, something that can go from like a high pass to a band pass to a low pass. So if I were to pull something up like this with an auto filter, kind of like so, I don't know why I needed to say that German, but if we pull this up, you'll see that this transitions here from a low pass to a band, to a high pass, to a notch, and then back to a low pass. So on paper, this is actually really cool, but the problem with it is that when you start applying multiple instances of this, or you start sending it through an OTT, for example, I have this going through a wavetable, there's a lot of issues with phase in the pole switching of what's happening that it creates a lot of artifacts that are usually undesirable. So if you listen to this, if you listen to what's happening on the top end of that, I'm going to make this a little bit harsh just so that way you can actually hear what's going on, but listen to the, the screaming of that movement. That should be a little bit more obvious now. So when it comes into doing something like a filter table, if you have something that's actually morphing back and forth between, you know, something that has cuts in them, and that's the key word is cuts, then a lot of times I do believe that you're going to run into some issues because like that's not going to sound very good. So let's pull up something like morph filter, which I do think is really important. Sorry, Morphe Q, because uh, Morphe Q is a fantastic plugin. Um, I think that you know, there's, yeah, I have other opinions about it and whatnot, but I do think that it's really cool. But as if you look at this, as far as what it's doing, all of the poles that this is morphing in between, um, all of the shapes and all that stuff are consistent. So it's a very different thing as to what is happening compared to the auto filter morphing of what we were doing from before. So for example, if you see me pull this up as a low pass, the low pass might sweep and we might create movement here. But as you can see, even though this might become a slightly different shape, the cuts are consistent. Now, to be fair, one thing or one advantage that Morphe Q has over something like Slice EQ, which is what we're going to pull up in a second, or even Auto Filter, is that there's a dry wet mix here. And so, in theory, you could do something cool to where you know you can have a crazy morphing filter and then pull off the mix. Serum can also do something like that as well. But even still, with some kind of morphing filter. Um, you got to be mindful of that. I think Vital would be the only other one that I know about. So when it comes into like how a filter morphs or something, that's kind of a loose or general term that might cause a lot of confusion. But when it comes into making something like a filter table, my solution to that, at least if you wanted to be able to apply something right now, is to kind of take what we can do, oops, uh, what we can do with the wavetable LFO and then also show you something that you might not know about with creating custom shapes with a slice EQ. So if we grab an LFO table here, then you can see that this will morph in between lots of different shapes. But the difference is that as opposed to creating a specific shape within something like a slice EQ, we're going to create movement. Slice EQ is so awesome, especially within a plugin like this because actually current as well, because you can create custom filter shapes. And this is really important because doing stuff like this will evoke certain vowels or certain, you know, weird timbres and whatnot. Now, something that's interesting is that if you create a low cut like this and you pull off of the mix, then only things that are bells or shelves will actually cut out of the mix. So if I were to turn this down and play the saw wave, you see that this is still cutting that out, even though the mix is completely off. And within something like the Kilohertz ecosystem, that's kind of problematic because uh, that would kind of impede on how, you know, I guess like the filter in itself works. However, if we were to create something like a shelf, something kind of like so, and then we set it to a very slope DB kind of like so, then this essentially is the closest thing that we'll get to something kind of like a low pass filter. But as you can see with all of these guys, if we move this over, which I do hope that there's some kind of overhaul with this at some point in time or another, we can actually set this to be bound by the table. 
So I can change this to here. I can change this and kind of just go through. And this is exactly why I wish that like this had its own built-in modulators or something. Um, but if you take a look at this, kind of like so, then we can kind of move this back and forth in between and create something that is a little bit more movement worthy. I need to change this over here, but now look. So with this, we can create movements along this way of creating these different shapes and have this filter actually morph into something completely different. And if you wanted this to, then you can change the shape. Um, or you can just use a regular LFO or something of the sort, but this is really the trick on how to create like custom morphable tables of making it have different patterns. And the dynamic of, of how I think a filter table would work ha would likely have to fall into something like this, because again, creating those poles and all that stuff would be a freaking nightmare for aliasing and whatnot. Now, I know that some people are saying, hey, you know, what about, you know, uh, flangers and phasers and comb filters and stuff. But, you know, if you have a little bit of mindfulness about what you're doing within these filters, then you know that pretty much everything is a delay. But when it comes into comb filters, phasers and flangers, they're all kind of very similar. They're not exactly the same, but they have a certain amount of resonance points and like depth of the resonant point in general. So you can essentially create your own custom phasers, your own custom flanders and comb filters. This is something that I use in physical modeling pretty often in which to make something like that. And so if you wanted to go from something that maybe had, you know, say a comb filter, but then you wanted to transition it into a neurobase, well, you would utilize the LFO table to make the frequency and the gain adjustment into what it is that you want. I don't really feel like I need to go that far into explaining this and how it works, but because I kind of just wanted to give you all the gist about custom filters and all that stuff. But like, this is a prime way about how I've been making Neurobase for years now and something that I tend to value so much within, you know, um, phase plant in its entirety. And with the new shaper table or something like that, you know, then you can kind of really like not have to go very far and just kind of crank this and you're going to have something that's relatively cool. So... So, I mean, really just messing with that, maybe throw an OTT on it or something um, and, you know, kind of pushing this forward or doing the whole processing chain or getting down and dirty with how exactly you want to control this is super helpful, you know, so being very specific with how all of this is controlled, perhaps even key tracking this. So if you want to set the speed on this, then you just take a note. Let's just say right click D sharp one. Everything needs to be pitched up an octave up. And uh, you can just set this to like 24 and set the speed on however fast you want this to go. So now and then we can just pull up some other kind of shaper table, taper shable, I don't know, trash panda doesn't really matter. A little bit noisy but you know you can like this is a very easy beginning point i wouldn't necessarily call it a day on this but you know what i mean um you can utilize this and change the shapes of all this stuff so So hopefully you get the point of that and um i yeah i don't know i don't really know how kilohertz would do that it would be super cool but i think that it's important to kind of just understand how this stuff works in general and understand that when you are shifting these cuts and whatnot that it's really going to affect the sound pretty heavily so hopefully that helps let me know what your thoughts are in the comments and stuff and you know yes i'm sure that there's it would probably be very difficult but i'm sure there's a way that you can remake a reverb esque filter inside of a slice eq if you have the patience for it because it's honestly just 
some crazy amalgamation of a comb filter. I believe that it can be done. Anyways, much love, guys. I hope that you all have an awesome rest of your evening. Be sure to like the video. Check out alchemy.com for my sounds and my music. Or buy some merch off the shelf that is on the video description down below. Bye, everybody.